Over the next few weeks, Pastor Jenny and I will be introducing a series of sermons called Vindictive by Ben Berto at our respective churches. Today is Ash Wednesday and the beginning of Lent. We hope you will hear God in these words and that your heart will be touched by the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your presence here today. Your community and church thanks you for your willingness to serve on the jury these next six weeks. In the coming weeks, there will be six separate cases that will require you to think critically and to be impartial as you are presented evidence and arguments by the prosecution and defense. Before you can be certified as uh, formally as a jury, we must swear you in. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. We solemnly pledge to fulfill and uphold all the duties of a juror faithfully and objectively, and I do so with no reservations. Upon this, your solemn pledge, I now impanel you as the jury in these cases. Your Honor, the jury is impaneled, and we're ready to begin. The court is now in session. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant. And like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him. And no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men. A man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. As one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Yet he bore the sin of many. And makes intercession for the transgressors. I, I believe, believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, maker Greek, of heaven and, and earth. And, and in Jesus Christ, Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, 
You love all that you have created, and you forgive the sins of those who come to you with humble and contrite hearts. Create in us clean and honest hearts, so that as we repent of our sins, we may receive full pardon and forgiveness through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. On my heart, imprint your image, blessed Jesus, King of grace, that life's riches, cares, and pleasures never may your work erase. Let the clear inscription be, Jesus crucified for me, is my life, my hope's foundation, and my glory and salvation. Our first reading is from Romans 9. 30 to 33. What shall we say then? That Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have attained it? That is, a righteousness that is by faith? But that Israel who pursued a law that would not, that would lead to righteousness, did not succeed in reaching that law. Why? Because they did not pursue it by faith but as if it were based on works. They have stumbled over the stumbling stone, as it is written. Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. And whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. Here now the reading of the charges from Mark 14, verses 3 through 9. And while he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he was reclining at the table, a woman came with an alabaster flask of ointment of pure nard, very costly. And she broke the flask and poured it over his head. There were some who said to themselves indignantly, why was the ointment wasted like that? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you. And whenever you want, you can do good for them. But you will not always have them. And surely I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Gentlemen of the jury, having been sworn in as
as members of this jury, I thank you for your willingness to serve in this capacity during our time together. I will, in the arguments that follow, show you beyond reasonable doubt that the cases you will be asked to adjudicate can be seen through no other lens than that of a guilty verdict. I trust that you will keep your oath as jurors and that your objectivity won't be swayed by emotional pleas, but by the facts of the case, the cases at hand. So we begin. The case before you today concerns the disciples of Jesus. On a certain day, these 12 men were gathered with Jesus, sharing a meal. They were in the home of a well-known man, Simon the leper. When the action in question took place, we have the eyewitness testimony of those in the room who say, that a woman entered, carrying a very expensive jar of perfume. Breaking it open, she anointed Jesus of Nazareth. This woman displayed true faith in the claims of Jesus. Knowing the history of the Jewish people and the practice of anointing kings and prophets, she anoints Jesus by pouring this most expensive oil on his head and so acknowledged him as king of the Jews, the Messiah. She confirms the anointed status of Jesus by making that known physically. And now these supposedly faithful disciples respond. In, in the sworn statement of Jesus' follower, Mark, who learned of the event from Peter, Jesus right-hand disciple and an eyewitness of the event in question, the disciples were indignant. Why was this anointment wasted when it could have been sold and given to the poor? These men sat in judgment over the faithful act of this woman, tarnishing her reputation and making light of what must have been a costly purchase given to Jesus. It's not just these words of the disciples that are troubling. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, these men, supposed disciples of Jesus, have a track record of indignant behavior that leads to defamation. The very crime these men are accused of has happened before. It's a matter of public record that these same disciples tried to prevent children from coming to Jesus, that he might touch them. They sat in judgment over little children, deeming them unworthy to be in the presence of Jesus. Defamation is an act of falsely or unjustly injuring an individual's good reputation. These men believed that the woman at the dinner made such a poor decision that she ought to endure their rebuke. But then again, jurors, don't we all do that? It's often our response to disagreements with others. We're quick to write them off, even verbally rebuke them, or writing messages that show our disdain. In today's world, we all are guilty of running to our respective corners of opinion and shouting at the top of our lungs, no matter the outcome. Forget listening or evaluating honestly. Snap decisions often guide our emotions, and our emotions guide our thoughts and words spoken and written. Who in your life? Have you written off as unworthy of your love or the love of Jesus simply because of a particular action in which they have been caught? Could another's faith possibly be expressed in a way that differs from your point of view but is still valid? 
We quickly realize that we are just as guilty of defamation as these disciples. We play judge, jury, and executioner over others while conveniently forgetting to look in the mirror at ourselves. Even so, the facts of this case remain the same. These disciples of Jesus defamed what was clearly an act of faith. They rebuked a woman who didn't deserve such treatment, treatment that was harmful to her reputation. The facts of the case can lead us to no other conclusion than to render a guilty verdict. Defamation of character has occurred. Thank you, Your Honor. Nothing further. something? And when you're surprised, do you react? Some people simply don't say anything at all. They, they freeze as if in a fight or flight scenario and simply don't or can't move. Others may be more verbal and simply let out a scream. While it's difficult to figure out exactly how to interpret a scream, we can certainly understand it, given the circumstances. Then there are those, when surprised, who simply say the first thing that comes into their mind. Whether good or bad, they simply express their initial reaction to the situation. People who have long-standing relationships with these individuals know not to hold them accountable for their initial reaction to a surprise. What we have here today, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, is not defamation, but a court case based entirely on charges brought against these men for their surprised reaction to a stunning situation. This is all just a simple misunderstanding. Imagine that you spent three years traveling with a teacher who taught you valuable lessons. Lessons such as avoiding materialism and caring for the needs of others, truly sharing all that you have and giving to the needy. When Jesus sent these disciples out on teaching missions, he told them not even to carry a money bag. Simply the clothes on their back would be enough. It's true. The court re record correctly states that the woman entered the home of Simon carrying a jar. But let's stop there, because already we have prob probable cause for concern. We see nothing in the record about an invitation to enter. We simply hear that a woman takes it upon herself. That's a stunning and bold move. We are then told that she takes the jar that she's carrying and she breaks it open, 
causing a public scene. Not only does the strong scent of perfumed oil fill the room, she then pours the oil on the head of Jesus while he and the disciples are trying to share a meal at Simon's in, with Simon's invited guests. So you see, ladies and gentlemen, this was simply the reaction of 12 men who had been trained to think of others first. Surprised though they were, they wanted to do the right thing with the money that could have been earned through the sale of the perfume. I'm sure that even all of you sometimes overreact and say or do things that you wish you had not done. These men also made a simple mistake. They overreacted. That is not defamation of character. It's simply surprise, plain and simple. What is more, Jesus offers both the woman and the disciples the good news. He says that she has done a beautiful thing to him. She has anointed him for his burial. We've just, we're just beginning on our journey through these cases during Lent, but already Jesus has in mind the forgiveness that will come through his death, burial, and resurrection. Although we will not be imparting ashes in this virtual service, remember the ashes that are generally placed on your forehead. You are preparing for Jesus' burial, too. What a beautiful thing. Don't be surprised. Take comfort in that event. Even though we may overreact to events, Jesus always has a plan in mind. Even though we cannot yet know the outcome of such events. The burial for which the woman prepares Jesus will be undergone for the disciples for the woman herself, and for you as well. You will soon hear the words, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. But Jesus' burial didn't end for him in ashes and dust. His burial ended with a bodily resurrection that offers eternal benefits to all who, like this anointing woman, place their faith in him. So you see, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, these men are not guilty of defamation. They have only expressed their surprise at a woman's actions. Jesus uses their surprise to teach the disciples that they and this woman are not guilty. In the same way, you and I are declared not guilty through his death, burial, and resurrection. Thank you, Your Honor. Nothing further. Join your hearts with ours as we confess our sin. O oh Lord, our Lord, you are compassionate beyond comparison, loving beyond imagination, and faithful beyond our betrayal. Just as David declares, my sin is ever before me. We too admit our transgressions. We have become stained with wrongdoing. Sacrificing the goodness of your love for the fleeting wealth of this world. We have abandoned your commandments. Caring less for your creation and more for our own ambitions. Wash us clean, O God of mercy, and deliver us from ourselves. Help us to hear your voice calling us back. Remind us of your love bringing us home. And renew our spirits that we might trust you with our whole hearts. Hear now as the verdict is rendered. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I announce to you God's marvelous and amazing grace. You are forgiven forever in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Though our sins deserve conviction, we trust 
and the forgiveness of God. Let us pray. Lord God, sometimes our hearts are glazed over and hardened by grief. We wonder in the middle of our pain whether we can trust you or not. Sometimes we even wonder if you are our enemy. Help us to take a long look at the hand you stretch out to us. Help us to make a choice for faith instead of despair. Help us to see the hand you offer us is one that is scarred with pain. Help us to accept the comfort given by Jesus' bleeding love. Because we can't see you, O oh God. Help us to listen and listen closely. For your words give hope to the hopeless, courage to the fearful, and joy to the downcast. Chiefly, let us believe these words for the ages. Take, eat, this is my body. Take, drink, this is my blood. In your holy name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy will be done. done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Since, due to COVID restrictions, we are not able to impose ashes as has traditionally been done. We encourage you to use your imagination and allow the Holy Spirit to continue working in your hearts. In humble repentance and self-examination, remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. Repent and believe the gospel.
The Lord has anointed me to grant to those who mourn in Zion to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes. The oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.